In this video, I'll be trying out the very first Blender version that I ever used way back in 2013. And I know this was the Blender version I used because I do have some screenshots of a few things that I created, but also I distinctly remember the girl with the purple hair in the splash screen. So it was Blender version 2.66a way back in 2013. I was 13 years old when I very first tried Blender for the first time. Now, even though I tried Blender for the very first time in 2013, I would say I didn't really start learning Blender until 2016. So back in 2013 when I was 13 years old one of my siblings was trying out Blender and I saw them using it and I thought it was so cool. I just thought it was so cool that there was a 3D program that you could use to create your own worlds and create your own environments and basically just use your creativity and create whatever you want. But back in 2013 when I first tried Blender I didn't know that tutorials were out there and back then I didn't really even use the internet but also the Blender community was a lot smaller. So I just kind of fiddled around with Blender. I tried to learn it on my own but I could never really get anywhere because I didn't have any tutorials teaching me how to actually use the program. So I just kind of fiddled around with the program, but after about a year I just stopped using it until 2016 when one of my friends was learning Blender and he was showing me all the really cool things that he was creating by following tutorials. So I decided to try Blender again, but this time I started following tutorials and I was immediately hooked and I really enjoyed just that you could create your own 3D worlds and create really whatever you wanted in the 3D program. But I thought it would be fun to jump back to Blender 2.66a just to see how far Blender has come and see how it's really been improved. Now if you do want to download this Blender version and try it out for yourself then I will have links in the video description where you can download it on Blender's website. They have an archive of older Blender versions. Now I use the Linux Mint operating system so if you're using Windows or Mac then I'm not exactly sure if it's going to install correctly. So when I downloaded it for Linux I just extracted the zip file and then opened up the Blender launcher but it didn't open so I submitted a post on the Blender Stack Exchange and these people helped me out on the Stack Exchange so thank you everyone who helped me out. Basically, I just had to install something in the Linux terminal that the Blender version needed. And after that, Blender 2.66a opened just fine on my modern computer. So here's the splash screen. I always remember opening this up and seeing the, the girl with the purple hair. And I always remember thinking like, man, that's such a good artwork. Like, how does anyone create that with Blender? Because again, back when I started using Blender, I didn't watch any tutorials. So I had no idea like how to actually do like 3D modeling and things. Basically, I was just like moving objects around. I did know about edit mode, but I didn't know about like all the tools like extruding mesh and things. Now another thing is that right click select is default, which I learned Blender using right click select because I used Blender before Blender version 2.8 when they switched over to using left click select. It makes sense for most of you guys to use left click because that's what most programs use to select objects or select things. But since I had already been using Blender for quite a while before Blender 2.8, I just got used to it and it's so deep in my muscle memory that I just really don't want to switch. So I just continue to use the right click select. Now what I'm going to do is open up the user preferences. So let's go here to file and oh here we go user preferences so that it's just moved up here. So there definitely are a lot of settings here. I want to see if I can turn up the interface bigger because the interface is quite small. All the buttons are pretty hard to see. Let's see maybe this. Nope that's not it. I'm trying to find the like the overall size for the interface. Okay here we go. So it's over on the system called DPI. So I'm just going to turn this up pretty big so it's a lot easier to see. We have add-ons. You can install different add-ons. I actually thought it would be fun to just like look through here and see see what kind of add-ons. So there's like the ivy generator. There's the extra curve objects. Uh, there's also like the sapling, the sapling tree. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's the ANT landscape. I use that quite a bit when I'm making environments. There's also the bolt factory. So a lot of these add-ons are actually pretty old. I didn't know that these add-ons were actually that old. Also something that I just noticed is that like it's a lot brighter, whereas like in Blender version 2.8, they made it a lot darker, which I like better. I don't really like this mid gray. I find it a little bit ugly. I'm actually gonna see if I can change that. So there's some presets, there's black. Oh, that's too dark. That's too white. That's a little bit better. It's kind of more like the modern Blender version. Oh, there's also like an Ubuntu one. That's interesting. And the weird thing is it appears as though I can't change it back to the default one because that's too light. That's like darker. That is really weird, but like I don't even see the default one. So I'm just going to have to close Blender and open it up again. Now, another thing that I just noticed is these settings right here. So the render, I remember this in Blender. There was like just some buttons to play the animation or render the animation or just render an image. And I actually kind of like this. I think that this could still be in Blender. That could just easily be like an add-on that someone could create. But of course, in the modern Blender version, you click here on like render and then render image. Or you can, of course, use the shortcut keys. That's the same. And the outliner looks a lot different. They definitely like totally change the outliner and the thing is I never use the outliner 
until like after version 2.8. I just didn't like the outliner and honestly the outliner wasn't that good. Let me just like add some more objects. So I'll go to the add menu and add like a few objects. There's the monkey head. And then I'm just gonna like make a new, if I can even make a new collection, this Blender version doesn't have collections. But let me see if I can just create some sort of like group. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to create like a, a collection or a group, which is why the outliner is just so useless. Like what's the point of the outliner if you can't even add them into groups? Now to organize my scene, I believe I use these little layers down here. Yeah, so I remember I didn't use the outliner because I just didn't really find it useful, but I use these little layers here, which this layer system is really quite bad if you think about it. So for example, I could move these to the other layer, which I actually don't even remember how to move them. Oh, okay, so you do press the M key. So you hit M and then you add it to this layer, but the layers don't even have names. So that's like, it's so hard to remember. I do remember though in like big projects, I'd like throw different objects into different layers. And then I believe if you hold down shift, you can add the different layers. So this is gonna be my cube layer. This here, I'm gonna make a monkey layer. And then these here are gonna be on the first layer. So now if you just hold down control or, okay, if you hold down control, it's just gonna go between them. If you hold down shift, that's gonna add multiple ones. So now I can just see all the layers. So, you know, it's an okay system, but really not that great. The collections in the outliner is like way better. Okay, here's another thing that I just noticed. So these little uh, buttons here are actually on the top, which now that I think about it, I remember that, but it's I think it's a lot better that it's on the side. But let's see if I can change the render engine. Where is the render engine? Oh, okay, it's right up here. I remember now. This is kind of nostalgic because I'm like remembering back in 2013 when I was first using Blender and I was like trying out all these things. So here it is. Okay, so there's the game engine, which I actually use the game engine just a little bit. I just made a few, like uh, I made like one very basic game where basically you just have a cube and you just like move the cube along a plane, like back and forth like this. You just like move it ar around like that. It was very, very simple. I basically just moved the cube on the X and Y axis. And then there's Blender Render, which is like, they called it the internal render engine, Blender Render. And then of course there's Cycles. So before Eevee, they had Blender Render, but they got rid of Blender Render and added Eevee, which of course Eevee is way better. Let me go into the rendered view. Okay, so the Z button goes into wireframe. I can't like go into the rendered view because they didn't have the pie menus. And that is interesting. So as you can see, there's actually no rendered view. So I actually can't even see what this is gonna look like. If I wanna see what the render is gonna look like, I actually have to render it with the camera. But let me change it over to Cycles and see if Cycles has a rendered mode. Okay, here we go. So Cycles does have a rendered mode, that's useful. So back in 2013, I didn't even know the difference between like Cycles and Blender Render. I'm pretty sure I just used Blender Render because I didn't even know Cycles existed. Because again, like, how are you supposed to know to click on this little button here and change it if you're not watching tutorials? So because I just didn't watch any tutorials, I just was like learning things on my own. So I don't think I even knew cycles existed, but that was probably fine because the computer I was using back then was a super old computer. It had like Windows XP on it. So it was a very, very old computer. So let me actually see if I can make something that looks nice. So I want to add like some better lighting. So let's go back to just the solid view. Wow. If you go to the light settings, look how few settings there are. Okay. So I can click on use nodes. Here we go. So there's a strength, let me just turn this way up and there's a color so I can make this maybe like slightly yellow, but there's like very few settings. Like there's hardly any settings to customize the light. Also, I remember the Hemi light. So back when I first used Blender in 2013, when I was in the Blender render, I would try rendering things and it just looked awful because again, I had no idea about like environment lighting, HDRIs, anything like that. So pretty much anytime I made anything in Blender, I would just use the Hemi light, which the Hemi light is terrible and I'm glad they got rid of it but the Hemi light basically just makes everything super bright, but it's terrible lighting. Like it doesn't look realistic at all. Oh yeah, and there's the tiles. In, in, in the new Blender version, there's no tiles. They got rid of tiles a long time ago. But if I just change this over, like let me go here to the light settings. Let's just change this over to like a spotlight and then render this. So you can see how much darker everything was. And again, since I didn't watch tutorials, I knew nothing about lighting, like the fundamentals of lighting. So everything always just looked really dark and gray. You can see this monkey head is like super black. So that's why I would always just switch to Hemi light because any of these other lights don't really look that good. You can see like, here's a sunlight, but see it's super dark. And so I was always like, oh, this looks terrible. Everything's really black. So I'm just gonna use a Hemi light. And so if I just use a Hemi light, I'm actually surprised how long this is taking to render on my modern system, but you can see a Hemi light just brightens everything up. So that's why I use the Hemi. And also another thing in Blender is no viewport denoising. There's no viewport denoising. So it looks super grainy and nasty. Now let's see if I hit control two, 
Yeah, control two is gonna add the subsurf modifier. So that's good. So I'll just shade these smooth. How do I even shade smooth? I don't think there's any object context menu. So I think I have to just click on shading smooth, which is terrible. Cause like you need a shortcut key for this cause people use it so much, but it's on the side panel there. So let's go into the rendered view again. All right, now this shader is terrible. So let's go into the shading workspace. I'll use the nodes. Now in the old Blender version, another interesting thing was that instead of having those tabs, you could click right here and change these, but I basically never use them. For some reason, I didn't like using these workspaces here, but actually this is a great idea. So let's just go over here to shading and there's no shading workspace. So I'm just gonna instead split the window and let's just change this. I don't even know, okay, you change it down here. We'll change it to the shader editor, I'm, I'm so slow. I don't know where, I, where everything is. Node, oh, node editor. It's called the node editor. So like, what about the compositor? And of course, geometry nodes was not in Blender at this time. Now, of course, if I go to the add menu and search for principle, there is no principled shader, which is crazy. Like how, how did anyone make anything look realistic without the principled shader? Now, when I first started watching tutorials back in 2016, I believe every tutorial creator, even Blender Guru, would add the diffuse and then they would mix it with a glossy. So that's like, now looking back at that, I think that's like a terrible way to create a shader because that's just so not realistic. The principled shader is so much more realistic, but I believe even the tutorial creators like Blender Guru would add like a mix shader. So let's add a mix shader like this. I'm pretty sure this is what everyone would do. Put this down here and then put this here. Now let's go into the rendered view. And I believe this was more realistic. And then you could like play around with the factor. It looks too metallic though. Like it looks like metal. It's like, how do you, how do you make like a plastic shader? I don't even know how to create a plastic shader without the principled shader. Let's try a 0.1. There we go. So that, that looks like plastic. That definitely looks like plastic. It, you know, it still doesn't look as nice as the principal shader. The principal shader is just way more realistic. Now, I believe another thing some tutorial creators would use was to use like the Fresnel node if it's still in there. Okay, so we have the Fresnel node. For some reason, it adds it way up here. Let's put the factor into the factor. Okay, that does look a bit better because the Fresnel is gonna like make the edges one color and then the, the front faces be more black. So that's a little bit better. That might honestly be the best plasticky shader you could go with without using the principled shader. Now the world lighting is terrible. So let's see what I can do about the world lighting. So let's go here to the world. I'll use the nodes and let's see if I can add an environment texture. Yeah, I can. So let's open an environment texture. Let's just add in, I don't know, the autumn field pure sky. That's a pretty nice one. Okay, there we go. That doesn't actually look too bad. Maybe we'll move the monkey heads down. But yeah, this is nasty. The uh, the lack of the viewport denoiser just makes everything look nasty. Like how could you even see what anything looks like? Cause like, it's really hard to see what anything is gonna look like when it's so grainy. Now, another thing I want to try out is seeing if I could actually make like a procedural material because if you're a regular viewer of my channel, then you know that I create lots of procedural material videos. So I'm gonna try making just like a basic procedural material. So let's search for the noise texture. And for some reason it adds all the textures up here. So let's drag Oh, there's no box select. Oh, you have to hit B. B for box select. Let's drag this up here. And I actually want to go here to textures and see what there are. So there's the brick texture, checker, magic, gradient, musgrave. Yeah, so there's pretty much all the pretty much all the same textures. So there's like Voronoi. Wow, but there's like no settings. Look at the settings. So there's distortion, detail, and scale, and then there's just scale. So like these have very little settings. So let's put the color into the color here and see what that looks like. So it is a basic Voronoi, but it just has like no settings. Let's also see if I can add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And they have object coordinates. Okay, phew. So I'll put that there. Let's also search for the mapping node. Here we go. Ah, oh, yes, and I remember this. So the mapping node is like gigantic instead of it being like up and down. Like this doesn't make any sense because these values are already horizontal, but then they're horizontal to each other. So that's a terrible user interface that they're all like horizontal. So there's just this massive like square mapping node. Okay, so there's the mapping and texture coordinate. Let's actually preview the noise texture and turn up the detail. So let's actually use the factor so it's black and white. Now I wonder if they have the bump node. They probably do, yeah, there we go, bump node. Of course, again, back then I had no idea what any of these things were. Like I wouldn't have known what these were. Let's see, can I go into local view? Oh, I can. So if I select the monkey head and hit forward slash, I can go into local view. But still, look how slow it is. I'm really surprised it's that slow. 
So let's turn the strength up to like one. Oh, it's so hard to see what it's gonna look like, but yeah, there we go. So I'm also gonna search for the glossy. Why does it add it up here? That is so annoying. <laughs> Okay, and then let's search for the mix shader, and we'll mix these two together. It's also really annoying that when I drop the mix shader here, it's on top of the material output, whereas in the new version, it just moves the material output over. So it's really amazing how far Blender has come. There's all these little, little, little things in the workflow that I'm just annoyed at. I keep getting annoyed, like using the box select. Like I can't, I can't just click and drag the box select. I have to hit b and then drag but let's actually take the noise texture and put that into the color and then let's search for the color ramp so they do have color ramps that's good so we'll drop that there are there any tabs can i drag these okay i can it just doesn't show a picture of the tabs so let's change the colors so we'll make this like a a brownish color actually i'm making rock so let's make it just slightly brown and kind of dark well, there we go. There's a very, very basic rock shader. So it was very limited, but as you can see back then, you could make procedural textures. They weren't that great, but you could make them. Now, I wonder if I can do any sculpting. Let's go into sculpt mode. Now, let's see how sculpting was. So let's just close this panel here. So let's hit F. Yep, so F makes the brush bigger. And I think I need to go to the modifiers and let's turn these way up and then we'll apply the modifiers. So apply that. Okay, now we can try to sculpt here. Okay, that's working fine. Let's see what the brushes are. Oh yeah, I remember these old brushes. So we have the grab brush. Yeah, that works fine. We also have clay strips. That's working just fine. So sculpting sculpting's pretty pretty nice, but I know that sculpting has been improved like the performance has been massively improved because I'm sure if I started to sculpt like a really high detailed mesh, it would get quite laggy. Okay, let's just give this a render in cycles. And there we go, cycles is rendering. Now another thing, of course, as well as it not having the viewport denoising, it doesn't have the denoise node in the compositor and it also doesn't have the render denoise. You had to bump up the samples so much higher. Like this is terrible. Let me see what the sampling is and just see see what the sampling is for this scene. Okay, so that's only 10 samples, so you know I would want to turn that way up more to like 100. Let's try rendering that again, and I'm really surprised at how long it's taking to render. Like that's taking a really long time just for 100 samples. But you can see there's all this, there's all these fireflies, which is just awful. Now I believe I had a workaround to this, and that was to like open up the light paths, and uh, I believe I used that like clamping. Oh, here we go, clamp. Let me just turn this up to like a one. Okay, that's a lot better. So if I turn the clamp up to one here, then that definitely gets rid of a lot of the, the fireflies. But still, it just looks nasty. Like when you zoom into that cube, it just looks really noisy. So I had to bump up the samples really high to get a decent render. So as you can see, Blender has been massively improved since 2013. So if you do wanna try out this Blender version for yourself, I'll have links in the video description to the archive on Blender's website where you can download any Blender version. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.